Hello everyone, my name is Mark Florence and I'm with the Southwest Technical College and Solar PV Outlaws. In this video we're going to talk about arc fault protection as required in the 2017 National Electrical Code related to solar PV systems. Let's get started. So here we have a diagram of a solar PV system. We're looking at the DC side of things. We have our complete array right here with a number of modules connected in series and then these modules are then combined together here in a combiner box and sent out to the inverter. You can see that we have two different types of arcs. We have a series arc which is shown right here, one on the negative side and one on the positive side and then we have a parallel arc here that's occurring between the negative and positive side. So to help us understand better how these arcs, where they occur and the dangers and, and why uh, a PV system, say an inverter that has arc fault circuit protection can detect both arcs but not necessarily stop both arcs, I want to talk about how this operates. So with this PV system we have sunlight, photons are hitting the array and they knock off electrons. Now what happens with that is as the electrons are knocked off, we're, t we're talking that the electrons will then leave the array right here on the negative side. They will flow out through, through the conductors into the combiner box. This is where they combine together and increase their current and then it flows out of that combined, that output circuit and then connects somewhere to an inverter goes through the inverter, pushes power into the building or into the whatever, you know, build residence or commercial building or whatever that is, and then the electrons flow back, back through the inverter, come back on the positive side, they split up right here on the, uh, in the combiner box, and then it flows back out, falls along on the positive side, and then goes through each one of these modules uh, and then it comes back out or again. So that would be our circuit. That's a normal operating circuit. However, if we have a series arc right here that maybe this wire's been cut or maybe that connection right here at the modules, uh, going from the module to um, just the building wiring, uh, it's loose or, or somewhere there's a loose connection, could be in the combiner box, wherever it is. When it has that arc right there and, and we start having an arc, and that inverter or that device detects it and it's above 300 watts, it would detect that and then it would shut the system down so current could no longer flow through and that means that current would no longer flow along this, um, this conductor right here and on a series arc it would shut it down and it would be safe. Whether it's on the, whether it's on the negative conductor or positive conductor, once the electrons stop flowing into the combiner box and then out to the inverter, once the inverter detects it and then shuts it down, current no longer flows right here and the arc stops. Now let's take a look at a parallel arc and help us understand why a parallel arc in this situation right here would not be able to be stopped by the uh, inverter protection. So remember, Electrons are knocked off, they flow out the negative to the combiner box, combine there, go out uh, on the combined uh, output conductor, they go to the inverter, back out on the positive side, flow back out, come across this conductor, down through the modules and then gravitate through and go back out. That's a normal operating system. However, if we have a couple of conductors and maybe they're inside of a conduit or maybe they're still in, in free air underneath the array and we have the negative and positive that are then, there's some type of fraying. Anyways, the, the conductors, the bare metal between these two conductors are touching and it's drawing an arc. That arc would be there. This inverter and the AFCI protection within the inverter would sense that arc as long as it's greater than or equal to 300 watts and then it would shut down production or the power flow within two seconds. Here's the problem with that. The current is no longer flowing out 
through this circuit right here and, and back in, this current right here, or this, this connection right here, this, this arc that we have, or this fault, we still have all these modules wired in series. They are bypassing. This connection is made before the inverter. So even though the inverter may detect it and shut down the flow of current through here, this would still bypass because it's as if we just cut these wires right here, got rid of this rest of the system, and we touch the bare metal together. Well, we could have several hundred volts right here. If these modules are rated, let's say they're 40, say they're 30 volts, uh, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times 30 would be 240 volts. We could have 200 and, uh, and uh, 240 volts and let's say they're about 8 amps current, we could have 240 volts and 8 amps current flowing right here, and it doesn't matter the inverters uh, shut down, disconnect the flow of current, because this bypasses it. So you can see an inverter that has AFCI protection will detect both of these arcs, series and parallel, and when it shuts the system down, it'll shut down the series arcs, but it cannot shut down the parallel arc because it's bypassing the inverter. So that's the danger and the thing we need to understand between series and parallel arcs is that the parallel arc can continue to burn even if the inverter in that system detects it and shuts the system down. I appreciate you joining me today. If you found this information to be useful and you'd like to either stay connected or be notified about future videos, please be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and I hope to see you in the future. Thanks.